Welcome everybody to the last video of the year. We've made it. Thanks for sticking with me. In this video, I have two crafts and at the end of the video, just for my regular viewers, I just want to have the chat because it's the last video and I just want to update you on schedule changes for next year as well. So this is what I was crafting this week and I just thought I'd film it one festive, one little DIY project. So I hope you enjoy it. I'll get into the first one. For this project, let's have a root in my drawers because I'm sure we all have an old piece of clothing knocking about. That's a bit plain and we could probably use it for something else. Is it this one? Yes. So I have this plain beige jumper. I think it's part of a tracksuit. I may have bottoms off it. I'll have to dig in. But what I was thinking was, I thought this would make a lovely Christmas jumper. I'm saying Christmas because I want to put a design on it that could be, like I want to wear it in January. <laughs> I don't want to just wear it for the month of December. But if I put, I found a cute design that I want to use, but it's like a little deer face. But I think if I, if I put the design maybe over the, the boob or in the center, and if I do it small, I might get away with it. This is the jumper, just needs a bang of an iron. I think it's from ASOS. Yeah, it's just your good old bog standard beige jumper. In the Design Space app, I just opened up a new project and I clicked on the images icon. I then just typed in deer to see what came up. Now, loads came up, so you could be a bit more specific. You could do cute deer, small deer, uh, filter out until you find the right image that you want to use. Once I had an image that I liked, I just sized it. You can measure out the size on the jumper first so that it's not going to be too big or too small. And then I set it to cut. So to do the deer is actually a great way to use up some of the scrap of vinyls and as you can see, <laughs> I hold on to them scraps. But the problem I have is, I don't know why I thought I had brown. My vinyl stash is looking very messy over there, but I thought I had a scrap piece of brown heat transfer vinyl, but I only have black. And then I have, like I do have a gold, but I think the gold against the beige jumper, I don't know if it's gonna look right. So apologies about the sun shining in. It's nice and sunny, sunny and cold outside. So I'm gonna use up my scrap pieces of fabric. So that can be the pink for the cheeks. Um, this can be the shape of the deer. I think I might use some scrap gold to do the eyelashes and yeah, use up your scraps for this one. I use the older model of the Cricut Maker. So there is a newer model. I think mine is about two years old. My machine, you have to use the mats on it. It's not like the newer model where you can just put smart vinyl in it. So I use the mats, which is perfect. You could also do this project on a Cricut Joy if you have one of the smaller machines because I'm not using a lot of vinyl for this project. Also, don't forget to hit mirror before you cut heat transfer vinyl. Once I had done all of my weeding and my design was ready, I just warmed up my jumper to get it ready to iron on my design. I do have one of the Cricut heat presses, but you can use a normal iron for this. The heat press just gives me this, the exact setting for the vinyl and the cotton on the jumper, but you can also use an iron for this. And just a tip, because I have done this before where I have accidentally melted my design into the iron. When you're layering the heat transfer vinyl, so I started with the deer shape and then I put the eyelashes on and the nose so just make sure to pop that protective sheet of plastic over the whole design and not just the eyelashes because you may melt um, the heat transfer vinyl that you have just stuck on because I have done that in the past so learn from me
I love this. I just think this is the cutest little deer ever. And also, I just wanted to share that I thought as I was doing this, I was like, oh, this is a scrap vinyl project. So just for anybody who's new, when you're putting stuff on fabric, you use heat transfer vinyl. So you have all of the vinyls, <laughs> not gonna lie, confuse me in the beginning. So you have permanent vinyl, non-permanent vinyl that you can stick onto surfaces. And then you have heat transfer vinyl. As the title says, heat is activated by heat. So your iron, so you iron this onto fabric and I think you can put heat transfer vinyl on wood and things like that, but it has to be activated by heat for it to stick. And then it fuses, like it's all, like you can wash this and it, hopefully my dear won't fall off. And then to confuse you even more, there's infusible ink. So if you think of maybe a t-shirt, that's when it's in the fibers of the jumper. So this heat transfer vinyl sits on top of the fiber and infusible goes into the fibers so it's like when you you can use infusible ink on like mugs you can use it on fabric so if you think of like a t-shirt and it, there's no feel to it because it's in the fiber i'm not doing a great job of explaining it but i don't really use infusible ink i stick to the basics and um, and then there's sublimation which i have absolutely no experience with whatsoever i am curious but master the basics that's what i always say master the basics before you move on to something else so if you have scrap heat transfer vinyl i think the little deer would be a cute project um and also if you don't want to do so this has little rosy cheeks and i adjusted the design i'm actually glad i didn't have brown vinyl because i think the black looks cute so i obviously have like a bow and whatever i was using whatever vinyl i had but you can tweak a design if you don't want it so if you don't want the little rosy cheeks and you want something a bit more minimal you can do that but um i'm delighted with that because i think i can get away with this in january <laughs> it's a winter jumper now i know i gave it a glitter nose and stuff but do you think I get away with it in January? I think so. <laughs> I want to make some candles, but not just any candles. I want to make them out of some wine bottles. Now, my pal Karen, I'm not a wine drinker. When I do, it blows the head off me. So my pal Karen gave me some wine bottles. Empty, of course. Now, one of them, Graham Norton. I didn't know Graham Norton had a wine. Western K Sauvignon Blanc. I don't know my wines. And a Gordon Ramsay. God, Karen likes the the <laughs> wine merch. Gordon Ramsay has a wine. I'm not surprised with that one. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. I have three bottles in case I break break them. Well, technically I am breaking them because I want to turn them into candles. So I've rooted out my bottle cutter. I have cut bottles on this channel before. I cut Hendrix gin. I think I cut some Guinness bottles going back a bit. So I want to turn these wine bottles into candles. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to steep them in some really warm soapy water to loosen up the label so I can take the labels off. Warm soapy water is normally enough and that's all I needed today but you can use some rubbing alcohol if you do have some glue residue on the bottle after cleaning. Whenever you're cutting bottles it's important to try and get that bit of glue off because if you are using a bottle cutter the glue can wear down the blade on the cutter so do just try and get it all off before you do the score line. I'm going to be using a bottle cutter for this you can pick them up cheap enough on the likes of Amazon or in craft shops and I also just have some safety gloves, sandpaper and my goggles. First thing I'm going to do is create a score line on the bottle and I'm going to use my bottle cutter for this. So I firmly have it in place and I just slowly roll it around until I get a score line all the way around. You only need to do this once and try and get it as straight as you can and that way your bottle is going to cut open nice and even. I then pour some boiling water along the score line and then I use the cold tap and I just put cold water around the score line. It might take you two goes to get this but I find generally once I do the cold water after the hot you hear like a crack. You can gently pry it apart as well but I find once you add that cold water you'll hear the crack and it will be separated. To make the edges smooth I just use some sandpaper to sand any rough edges 
obviously if you do have an uneven split it's safer to just discard that one put it in the recycling because you don't want anybody to cut themselves off this but you can use i use the 180 grit to start with and then you can work your way up to a finer grit to make it even smoother so now let's have fun and turn them into candles i already have a candle kit that i have from earlier in the year when i was doing craft demos you can pick up a kit online really cheaply i'll pop a link in the description to one if you want to check it out i'm using soy wax i have some candle wicks a thermometer some glue dots to fix the wick to the base of the jar and I just have these lollipop sticks with holes in them that will hold the wick in place when I pour. I heat the wax until it's about 85 to 90 degrees and this is Celsius not Fahrenheit. At this temperature I will pop in some essential oils. I'm using an apple and cinnamon blend that I had picked up. If the temperature of the melted wax is too hot it will burn off the scent of the oils that you're putting in so you'll basically be wasting your oils. So there is a bit of a sweet spot when it comes to the temperature and adding your fragrance. Also, if you're wondering why I have two wicks and not one, you'll notice that my wicks are very thin. And sometimes if you have a thin wick, it can cause tunneling to happen with soy wax. So to avoid that, I'm just adding extra wicks into the wax. So my regular viewers, what a year it has been. I feel like everybody for the past couple of years, we say that we get to January because Lord knows we've all had a lot thrown at us the past few years. And, and this year, do you know what? It was a little bit better. Sadly for me, the end of the year was not so good, which is why I think I have run out of steam. <laughs> for uh, the month of December on YouTube. So thanks for all of the lovely comments on the video about Blondie. I did, you know what, I was having a fun year. <laughs> Granted, God gives you your fair share of ups and downs. And I definitely had my peaks in the year and I definitely had my, the opposite of peaks, dips. <laughs> oh, the dips were not fun, but what is life without, you, you don't, this is a, here's the philosophical, the lesson of the year. You need to have the dips to appreciate the peaks. And most of the fun is had on the journey to the peak, if that makes any sense. I feel like that's something I kind of learned when I was on Camino, that the destination and the finish line, it's great, but it's actually, you're kind of just a bit like, then what? But actually the fun was had when you were on the journey and you were in the pain and you were up and down and some days were great, some days not so great, but actually it was the journey. So I don't know if any of this makes sense, but I think my lesson for 2022, the joy is in the journey. There will be peaks, appreciate them, have gratitude for them. And then there will be dips. I need to get a better word for dips. It makes you appreciate the peaks, but also you know that nothing will last forever. So whilst peaks don't last forever, need to do the dips. So the joy is in the journey. <laughs> and here's to, I don't know what 2023 is gonna hold. <laughs> 
not gonna lie, I'm kind of just a little bit exhausted, if I'm being totally honest, creatively exhausted. Um, so with that being said, there will be a video on the 5th of January. Is that a Thursday? I think that's the first Thursday. So there will be no videos now for the rest of the year, but it's only like a week. Um, and I am going to delete all of the social media apps off my phone. I'm gonna just chill out in real life with my friends, my family, have a few Guinness, just do nothing. I'm not going to pick up a paintbrush or a sewing machine or even look at the garden. I am just going to be for a week. <laughs> And then for January and February and probably early March, I will be back to just one upload a week on a Thursday. And that's because I do have some other work, non YouTube, vlog, anything related that I do have to do in January, February. And social media can be a massive distraction and a drain on your creative resources. So it'll be one upload a week, just like it was before for January and February. And then the garden video will be back on probably March time when everything starts to defrost. You can tell it's chilly today because I've got 10 layers on. <laughs> Thank you for all of the support this year, especially on the book. That is still really surreal. And I still see comments from people saying that like they've ordered a coffee. If you get a copy for Christmas, if Santa has gotten you a copy, that just fills my heart with joy. I will catch up with comments in the new year and have the chat. It's probably too late to get it shipped internationally, but Bookstation still has signed copies and they ship internationally. And feedback from people who've bought from Bookstation overseas, they said that it took about a week to receive it. That's the only way to get an online signed copy. Um, you won't get signed copies from Amazon or Barnes & Noble unless they have some left, but I don't think they do. And that's because their book stock did not come through Ireland. So I did sign a couple of copies at the start of the year for overseas, but I'm not able to sign any future stock because shipping, it just went straight to them. It didn't pass through Ireland. So I hope that explains. So Bookstation does have some signed copies left. I'll leave a link in the description. But thank you because that was a really surreal part of the year. It feels, it feels like it was such a long time ago. You know, when you reflect on the year, um, but yeah, I still, like last in, um, when I was in Belfast, I just popped into the Waterstones and just to see if they, I didn't even expect them to have a copy. And I just went to the craft section and I was like, oh, there I was next to a sewing book that I actually had. I was like, oh, I have that sewing book. And then I was like, oh, <laughs> it's me. <laughs> and yes, I did sign it, of course. I asked the girl, I actually carry Sharpies just in case, cause you never know where you're gonna find yourself. And then I asked the lady in the shop, I was like, can I have a Sharpie and can I sign this? And she's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> so yeah, it was just a surreal part of the year, wasn't it? I was gonna do like a separate kind of Q&A video because I don't really do those style. I don't think I've done a Q&A in like two years. Um, but honestly, I'm actually really exhausted and you kind of have to be in the headspace for doing them things. And I don't know what 2023 is gonna hold. The last little chunk of this year has kind of taught me that, uh, what's it, God laughs when you make plants. <laughs> so, yeah, I think I'll just go with the flow for a little bit. Obviously I do have, you know, goals and things that I want to achieve in 2023, but you know what one of them will be? More rest, more rest. But anyway, I am going to wish you all a happy, happy Christmas and I hope you have an amazing New Year's, whatever you do. One of the reasons why I love taking a social media break over Christmas is because I, I just don't like social media at Christmas. Maybe that's really Scrooge of me, but I get like, sometimes I'll feel FOMO or I feel like everyone else is having this amazing time when really I'm just sitting eating a box of celebrations with my family. So I just delete the apps for Christmas and then keep my head clear. So if you are someone who is possibly like that, I suggest the same. Um, but have an amazing Christmas and New Year and I'll see you in 2023 for who knows what the year has ahead of us. <laughs> We're just going with the flow. We're just going with the flow. I will see you in, I was about to say next week's video, but it'll be two weeks and cheeky thumbs up, you know the drill. If you're new to my channel, 
check out the recent videos and sure come along with us in 2023 as we just go with the creative flow. But thank you again for all of the support this year and I will see you next year.